Oppenheimer Chief Investment Strategist John Stolfus. John, it is always great to have you on the show. And it just help us make sense of this market, John. So, you know, we're walking through this earnings season, it's been solid, John, right, relative to the expectations. But then we also get this economic data, PPI, CPI, retail sales, not so great. Help us make sense of it, John, where you think the, the market is now and, and where you think it's headed. Well, uh, thanks for having me on the show, uh, Josh. Always great to be on Yahoo Finance. Uh, I've got to say this, when we, we look at it, you know, really, if we look at the earnings for the S&P 500 Q4, you've got uh, three or four sectors with double-digit earnings growth. They, uh, at least three of those are cyclicals, okay, and oh, technology, communication services, than consumer discretionary, and I think actually utilities is the only defensive on double-digit earnings growth. Then on the other hand, your negative earnings growth is coming from uh, materials, energy, and healthcare in that fourth quarter. And when you look at it, it, we would have to say the mixed bag in terms of inflation data hotter than expected, um, a reiteration in our view of the pushback that the Fed has been giving that uh, to the uh, to the market, particularly the trading community and those much more leveraged who've been trying to get the Fed to pivot, uh, you know, uh, uh, with uh, re looking to reduce rates uh, what uh, five or six times initially starting in March. Our opinion has been for a long time when it comes to inflation, stickier than expected. Fed on target uh, in terms of moving towards its target. Uh, and with expectations, the Fed will likely not push the economy into a recession because it's being remarkably gentle, considering that it's already been through 11 hikes and five pauses uh, thus far in a cycle that began uh, in March of 22. So the kind of numbers that we're seeing today, especially as, as uh, a, a speaker before me uh, just said, with seasonality, volatility, and then a transitional time, when you're liable to get mixed reviews, so to speak, not uh, not surprising to us. And if anything, uh, we'll stick to our, our, our uh, guns here. John, it's Julie here. What's so fascinating to me is there are segments of this market right now, and you just heard us talking about some of them, notably in video or Supermicro or even in Eli Lilly, that feel like 2021, that feel like when cash was cheap, right? That there was a lot, that people were just like throwing their stimulus checks into the market. Um, and it you know certain parts of it feel like that right now what do you think that's a function of i think it's a function uh, uh julie of of uh, we are now at higher levels than we've been th that i can recall in the last 40 years of uh, uh, uh individual investors being exposed to the equity market and at a time when jobs are relatively plentiful, uh, even in a, in a Fed uh, a hike cycle that's been going on for uh, just about two years now. Uh, and so there's a lot of money floating around and there's huge capitulation uh, after uh, 2022 when uh, the Bears' uh, negative pitch book uh, essentially was proved to be unfounded uh, because uh, nothing with the exception really of the direction of the market, which went down that year, but a lot of the things they were looking for, uh, increased unemployment, uh, plunging uh, earnings and revenue growth, and an economy uh, sliding into recession just didn't happen. And so you've got capitulation of the bears, the skeptics, and the nervous investors. And then I think a general feeling across the uh, marketplace universe uh, uh, particularly with individual investors and, and institutions that serve individual investors, that uh, Social Security looks like problematic to the future, uh, both for uh, existing retirees, people planning on near-term retirement, and those with a long distance ago, and where's the traditional phase, place that you find the better growth? Historically, it's inequities. And John, next week, um, sticking with NVIDIA, right? They're gonna report next week. Last, the Magnificent Seven, John, to report results. What are your thoughts on big tech here, John? Do, do you stick with the Magnificent Seven? I think that you do stick with the uh, Magnificent uh, Seven here, particularly if, if you got in at an earlier date, why take uh, uh, profits if it's outside of a retirement account uh, and, and face high taxes? Uh, on your holdings, uh, we would think uh, for those who haven't gotten in, you don't want to back up the truck here on, on the on, on the Magnificent Seven, but rather realize that the broadening of the rally here 
uh, across other sectors, growthier value sectors uh, uh, related to things like uh, uh, consumer discretionary, uh, uh, industrials, places that are likely to see some pickup in this election year, also as the economy we believe will prove to be continually resilient, uh, if, if not robust, and we're not looking for robust. Resilient is what we want to go for. We just think it, there's opportunity. We did see the smalls and the mids get hit hard today. They got hit on, hard on Tuesday. Uh, that's still uh, an inconclusive evidence that they're going to be uh, places to uh, to rush towards. Uh, but with uh, without a doubt, we have to say the experience says if indeed the Fed gets to pull this off without a recession and companies keep showing resilience in terms of growing uh, revenues and earnings, hey, this, this does look like a, a, a rally that has legs here, notwithstanding uh, the reality that stocks don't just grow to the sky or in a straight line, but you have to be willing to put up with... Uh, Good days and bad days, you know. Yeah, most definitely. And, and John, um, looking in the much shorter term, we're getting NVIDIA earnings next week. And I know you're a macro guy, but is NVIDIA now a macro mover for the market? Are we going to see the following day, as goes NVIDIA, so goes the rest of the market? Well, Julie, I, I, the firm does not let me uh, comment on individual stocks because I manage money uh, for the firm and they don't want me to be pitching my stocks. Uh, but I can say this, related to technology in those areas that are significantly exposed to near-term, intermediate, and longer-term uh, uh, AI, we have to say we think they're still in the sweet spot. Earnings are, are likely to show uh, continued improvement Occasional misses on a quarterly basis when uh, the analytical community gets too enthusiastic about them. But the overall trend looks like uh, this week will probably continue some positive numbers, uh, if not extraordinary. But you never know. You never know. John, thank you so much for joining the show. We always love having you. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Same to you all.